Hello, all and welcome. My name is Margaret. I'm a historical costumer and textile conservator in training. And today I have another sewing video for you. We are making a quilted jacket. So this is a jacket that I created from a vintage quilt top that I cut out and quilted myself and then sewed into the configuration of a 1940s style hunting jacket. This is a vintage pattern and I will pop it down below. I believe it's on Etsy can follow along if you so choose. But before we get into the sewing content, I do want to briefly talk about upcycling, quilts, reuse, and this trend for quilt clothing. So there is a wonderful video by Mary Fonz, which I'm going to link down below, which is all about this quilt clothing trend and how we are using the non-renewable resource of vintage and antique quilts to create this type of clothing. Now, Mary is obviously very, very, very protective of antique and vintage quilts. She loves quilts. I understand this coming from a conservation profession and looking at so many altered and quote unquote upcycled antique garments. I also get very defensive. I have an entire video about Kim Kardashian wearing Marilyn Monroe's Ron Rose dress where I get really, really defensive about this stuff. So I totally understand where she's coming from and you should definitely check out that video because if you are going to make something like this or you are going to purchase something like this, it's important to understand where these materials are coming from. Quilts and textiles in general have long been underrated in the art world, mostly because they were seen as women's work or put into the craft category and not necessarily seen as fine art or objects of historical importance, which is um, frankly bullshit. And because of that, they are sort of put on a lower rung of, of art and often not as valued monetarily or for their wonderful historical significance. Now, with that all being said, textiles have this wonderful quality of reuse, which is within the historical record. It's within the quilt making tradition. It's within the garment making tradition. And thus, this I have a softer view on the quilt clothing trend. If you like it, if it's something you're going to wear and you're like, this is vibing with you, like it vibed with me, I think it is totally fine to make or use a piece of clothing made out of a quilt. Granted, don't just do it for the trend. Do it because you love it. Do it because you're going to wear it. Do it because you're actually going to use it. With that being said, you should be a bit educated when picking your materials for this project because you don't want to be using something that is historically important. So if you have your grandma's quilt in a cedar chest downstairs, I highly suggest one, moving it to a wonderful temperature controlled location and putting it so that the bugs can't get to it and saving and loving that quilt and using it because that is a part of your family history and that is part of um, our general collective history. But there's a lot of uh, material in this world that can be used. Personally, for this project, I did find, and I was looking for a long time, I should I should say, I, I was looking for a good candidate for this for the long time. I found a vintage 1960s, 1970s-ish quilt top. It was someone's scrap quilt. So this is a quilt that they made out of sort of their scraps that they had around from their other sewing projects. And it was not in the best condition in that the textile selection for this particular quilt was obviously just random stuff they had around. So some of it was polyester, some of it was cotton, some of it was linen, and this kind of these less densely woven fabrics that started to actually pull away at the seams. So there's a lot of sections in this quilt, and you're gonna see this in this video where I had to take other sections of the quilt and replace them. There was also several areas of staining. All in all, it was highly, highly, highly unlikely that this was going to be utilized as a quilt by anybody and therefore it did make a good quote unquote upcycle, which I've mentioned this in other videos before, but I really don't think that using vintage materials is necessarily sustainable. I think Mary Fonz puts it best here. Do you know who doesn't make quilts anymore? Dead people. You gotta be really careful when picking out your materials for this project. If you're not interested in cutting up a vintage item at all, you can of course find what are quote called cheater prints, which are essentially prints made to look like quilts, or you can of course quilt something yourself. That is something you can do. I personally wanted vintage fabrics and I found that buying vintage fabric and buying a vintage quilt top were kind of, ethically that's very similar for me. And 
frankly, it's time saving. With that all being said, and with that very complex situation somewhat unpacked, let's just jump right into the video. This jacket was constructed from three layers of fabric, um, the quilt top, the cotton batting, and a cotton and silk madelaise lining. The first step was to layer the quilt top onto the cotton batting. I had actually two pieces of cotton batting, I didn't buy a big enough one, and I had to make sure that it was nice and smooth and I made sure to pin that in place. At this point, I also pinned replacement sections to the damaged or stained pieces that I was going to take out. I wanted to do this beforehand just to make sure that I had enough pieces to replace them with and also so that I only would have to replace the bits that I would actually need to instead of just replacing it originally. I then strategically pinned and cut out the jacket pieces, starting with the largest and most visible and working my way to the smaller, less visible pieces. So starting with like the front and back panels and working my way to things like collars and cuffs. I originally did cut some allowance around the pieces to compensate for the shrinkage that would be due to quilting, but since the pattern was going to be a bit large on me, I did a mock-up of this. It was a men's like 38, and I did want it to be a little oversized. I was okay with the pieces shrinking a little bit during the quilting because it wasn't going to be too, too bad. So I eliminated this in the cutting out the next two pieces. Once all the pieces were cut out, I removed any of the damaged bits and replaced them with the pre-selected replacements. And these were all hand sewn into place. Next, it was time to quilt. I used a white waxed linen thread to do the quilting stitches throughout both the top and the batting. And my quilting stitches were relatively long, but I did this in order to give the project kind of a homespun feel and also to make it go a little faster because this process took a while. I did enjoy the process though. I had a great time um, and it was very relaxing, but the fall weather here in New York City was so lovely. So I decided to take my quilting outside and go to Central Park. This process took about a week on and off, but I really enjoyed the final product. Also, the squirrels here are very bold and were getting very, very close to me. Next, it was time to construct the jacket. So I cut out the lining and I first worked on the pockets, sewing the lining on them, turning them right side out, pressing them, and then sewing them onto the jacket front. I'm showing you here working on the pocket flaps, which I ultimately did not use as they were just too bulky. I was really thankful for my sewing machine during this project as I had a lot of layers to sew through and my sewing machine just worked like a champ. Next, I sewed the major seams together, so fronts to back and the shoulder seams, and then sewed the sleeve pieces together. And I repeated those steps on the lining as well. The next phase was to ease the sleeve head and set them into place. I normally set my sleeves by hand because it sucks less than doing it by machine. If you are a sewer, you know what I mean. Sleeve setting arm size is always the worst bit, except for zippers, which this project also has. Next, I sewed the under collar onto the outer jacket, which will make sense in a couple seconds. And then I sewed the front facing to the neck facings and sewed the lining all the way around the front facing and sewed the outer collar onto that. So now I had two distinct pieces, the outer part of the jacket and the inner part of the jacket. I connected these together via the collars, putting them right sides together and sewing them in place, flipping them right side out and top stitching them to make them look nice and crisp. Then I inverted, you know, the entire piece was inverted at that point. I matched up the sleeves, with the sleeves and the hem with the hem. So everything was in place. Next, it was time for the zipper. Here you're witnessing the final product of much basting and much struggling. Basically, the zipper is sandwiched between the front and front facing, which is really, really thick. I did have a couple attempts at this. I'm showing you the good attempt. And then I pressed and whipped the hem of the lining also into place. 
I did baste the outer part of the hem first as well. Next, it was time to finish off the sleeves. And at this point, I had been sewing basically all day. So the camera work did suffer at this point, but I will try to talk you through it. I pinned a square of fabric onto the sleeve and sewed around the edge where I was going to create the slit and then cut that open, turned over that piece of fabric to create a nice finished edge. Then I sewed the cuff pieces together, turned them inside out, sewed them onto the end of the sleeve, and then top stitched everything into place. And lastly, although I did not film this, I also sewed on buttons and did the buttonholes by machine. And with that, it was finished. I am overall really happy with the finished product. I really enjoy the silhouette. I love a vintage looking work jacket that's a little oversized. I own like five of them and I'm not going to stop. I just, I just got another vintage hunting jacket that's sort of the same silhouette. So, you know, I'm into the silhouette. I really love the colors and I've been getting a lot of compliments as I've been wearing it around. And it is a great weight, not too heavy, but not too light which is good here in the winter with just a sweater. This is the perfect weight of jacket for me. So I hope you did enjoy watching the process of making that jacket. I've gotten many compliments on it since I've started wearing it here around New York City and um, I'm going to wear it for many seasons to come. I'm very excited about it. If you would like to follow me around here on the interwebs, you can of course click the subscribe button down below. You can like this video if you liked it. You can ring the bell for notifications. I don't normally say that. You can also go over to Instagram and TikTok where I'm at Costume and Conservation. You can check out my website at costumeandconservation.com and uh, you can come back here for a new video soon. I'll see you later. Bye.